Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. It has been a while, but we're back. And in today's tutorial, I wanted to try something a little bit different from the usual. And that is I wanna spend most of our time in Adobe Illustrator because I wanna share my general approach to creating better illustrations. Now, what's great about this approach is it's perfect for the type of person that does not consider themselves an artist. So if you're the type of person that does not think you're very good at drawing, you hate using the pen tool, then I want you to keep watching because this tutorial and this technique is perfect for you. So without further ado, let's get into Illustrator and start illustrating. All right, so I've got Illustrator open. I've got an, a new document open here, 1920 by 1080. And the first thing I'm going to illustrate is a water droplet. Now I know this is probably a pretty simple, it's a perfect example to illustrate kind of my approach. Now, traditionally you might grab the pen tool and you might try to draw out the water droplet like so. And then you might grab your anchor point tool and try to fiddle around with this a little bit. Smooth out, make your curves a little bit better. Okay, so the point is that I could spend a lot of time trying to perfect this and make it look really smooth and circular. Or I can grab my ellipse tool, come over here, create an ellipse, grab my direct selector tool, grab this top anchor point, pull it up, grab my convert or my anchor point tool and boom. Then I could just grab these handles here. Just adjust these, pull these up a little bit. And I've basically got a water droplet there and it looks a lot better. It took a lot less time, it looks smooth. And so this is a perfect example to illustrate kind of my approach to creating illustrations in, in Illustrator. And that is to start with these basic shapes, these primitive shapes, circles, rectangles, and then build out my illustrations using those. So this is a pretty simple example. I'm gonna create a new artboard because I wanna move on to another illustration and I'm gonna create a wrench. Um, and to do that, I'm gonna create a circle and in Illustrator, you can actually copy shapes by just holding Alt. You'll see this uh, double, uh, double cursor there. That means you're gonna be duplicating it. I'll hold Shift as I drag it down so that it stays on this alignment here and boom I've got two new circles there and then I'm going to connect them with this rectangle and the rectangle is not exactly in the center so I'll just grab all of my shapes go over to my align tool make sure align to is uh, set to align to selection and I'll click align a, a horizontal align center so that aligns them all to the center so they're all evenly centered. And then what I'll do is I'll grab all three of them and I'll go to the Pathfinder and I'll hit this first Unite button and that will make one shape. Now, this doesn't look like a wrench yet because we're gonna go over to our rounded rectangle tool and I'm going to create a new rectangle, some round corners. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this rectangle rectangle to cut this shape out of the main shape here. And again, I'm going to select both my shapes and I'm going to go back to the align tool and just make sure that they are aligned to the center so it looks right. Then just like before, I'm going to hold alt and drag my rectangle down to the bottom to duplicate it. Now I've got two rectangles. Now this time I could use the Pathfinder tool, but I also want to show you this other tool called the Shape Builder tool. I grab the Shape Builder tool with my shape selected. If I hold Alt, you'll see that the plus turns to a minus there by my cursor, and I can just minus out these shapes. And actually I'm going to undo because I just realized that this needs to be move down, I'll go over here, and then I'll just minus that out. And now we've got a wrench. Now I can further refine this shape by grabbing my direct selection tool, grabbing these four anchor points and grabbing these little circle things, I don't know what they're called, and just pulling them out. And 
Bada bing, bada boom. We got a nice wrench um, shape. Now, if you were to try to do these curves uh, and get them all exactly the same with the pen tool, good luck. Not going to happen. Uh, unless you're incredibly patient and have a lot of time on your hands. So now I'm going to uh, select this. By the way, this uh, arrow selection tool selects the entire shape. Direct selection tool selects the anchor points. Okay, so just they don't have that distinction in uh, After Effects, but there is that those two different selecting tools in Illustrator. Just a little tip. If you're unfamiliar with Illustrator, I'm going to hit R to bring up the rotation properties, and I'll hold Shift to rotate it at a 45-degree angle. Now, you know what? I'm going to just move this over to the side because I now want to make a hammer. I'm going to make kind of like an X uh, with a hammer and wrench uh, icon maybe for s something. And hammers are really easy because I can just literally make a bunch of different uh, uh, shapes using the rectangle tool. Just like before, I'll grab all my shapes, go to the Pathfinder, make them all one shape. And then I can go to my direct selection tool and I can select uh, this, these circles and just make those. Maybe I don't want it that much. Just want to make it so it's there's no hard edges. It's not the art style I'm going for. And then to make the handle, again, I can just this with my handle selected i hit hold control and hit the left bracket that brings it behind and i'm just going to eyeball the alignment here now to make that little like uh i don't know what you call it the part of the hammer that you use to take nails out i'm actually going to grab my curvature tool here and i'm just going to make this like curved shape and the reason why I'm using the curvature tool rather than the pen tool is because the curvature tool just helps me get this nice curve, whereas the pen tool, I have to click, drag out the handles, and I have to basically eyeball the curve, and it just doesn't turn out as nicely. Now, you might be looking at this and going, that doesn't look great. And you're right, it doesn't. I'm going to rotate this because I want the angle to be kind of like that. And at this point, it doesn't look good because we have a few things to do to it. So the first thing is I'm going to increase the stroke by a lot, stroke width by a lot. And then I'm going to come over to the width tool. Now, if you're not seeing the width tool, you might be seeing one of these other tools, but the width tool is what we're going to use. And I'm going to come down here to the very end of this. And when I do the end, when I want to taper the end, I usually click the end and then I pull down and over because that way, uh, I'm making sure I'm actually getting the end of it. If I just go over like this, sometimes you're not actually getting the end of the stroke. You're getting slightly above the end, and so you have this weird line at the end. So I'm going to grab the end and pull down and over just to make sure that I have the end. And then I'm going to come over to the stroke panel over here, and I'm going to give it a round edge. And it's going to be round over here, which is not going to matter in a second. Uh, but now with my stroke selected, we can see I kind of have that, uh, that shape and I can maybe make it a little bit smaller. And now with the stroke selected, I'm going to go to object. I'm going to go down to path and outline stroke. So what this has done now, if I double click it, I'll go into this group and I now have a shape instead of a stroke. So I've used, I've created the shape with my stroke, used the tapering tool, which doesn't exist in After Effects. I don't know why you can't taper strokes in After Effects yet, but I've tapered the stroke to create the straight, this shape, and now I've converted that stroke into a shape. So now what I can do is I can actually just um, make an outline and... By the way, the eyedropper tool in Illustrator works a little differently than After Effects. In After Effects, uh, you just sample a color. In Illustrator, the eyedropper tool samples the color and the style. So if I sample the color of this stroke on my hammer, uh, it's not going to just sample the color, which is black, but it's also going to sample the stroke width. So it changes my stroke width, which, is, which really comes in handy. Okay, so now 
Uh, I'm going to go uh, back out of this. I'm going to grab my two shapes here. And just like before with the Pathfinder, I'm just going to make them one shape. Now, something weird went here because I have this stroke still, my original stroke behind here. So I'm just going to delete that and I'll place that back there. And oh, the other thing that we can do before I join these two shapes is I want to go back to object path and I want to simplify this. So right now it's three points. I want four points. So now if I select this. We just have four anchor points. And uh, there's a weird point there. So I'm just going to move this here. Rotate this like that. That looks good. Now I'm going to grab these shapes. Oops, I don't want to grab my handle. I just want to grab these two shapes. Great. Now I've got my hammer. Now I can grab all these. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of style to it, maybe increase the thing. Then I'm going to grab these two shapes and I hit Control G to group them. So now when I grab one of them, it moves the whole thing as one object. That just makes things easier. I'll hit R to bring up rotation, drag, holding Shift, do 45 degree. And then I can just move it like that. Okay, so now we've created some illustrations for a hammer and maybe this is representing an icon or something, I don't know. Uh, let's move on to another tool. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use the same approach by using primitive shapes and in combination with the pen tool to create some really cool illustrations. So. Uh, I want to do this like a uh, little light bulb uh, illustration using one line and you'll kind of see how I'm doing it, but I'm going to start with a circle because light bulbs are circular and I'm just going to bring that here. Now what I'm going to do before I start to draw out my light bulb, I'm going to grab my add anchor point tool, zoom in down here and I'm going to just add some anchor points here. It uh, doesn't really matter where you add them, but basically the reason why I'm doing that is because now I'm going to go over to my eraser tool, hold down and grab the scissor tool, and I'm going to just click on these two anchor points. And what that's done is it's separated this segment of my, it's separated this segment of my shape. So now I can just delete that. Now I have this open shape, and I like to just keep that uh, rounded edge ends there. Now I can grab my pen tool, select the last anchor point, and now I can add to this whole entire shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a point here, and I'm just going to draw out this kind of like screw shape that's on the end of uh, light bulbs. And I'm holding shift this entire time, so I'm just getting straight lines. I'll go to the center here, and end. Okay, so now I have one long shape, and that's already way easier. You would never be able to do this by hand, especially this top part of the light bulb. Like, you're not gonna get that to be that round. So now I can just make some adjustments. Maybe I want to like grab these anchor points and I actually wanna shift them down just so that I can have this light bulb shape. And again, now I'm going to use the direct selection tool to just kind of draw out these nice curves. And I'm going to select all of these curves except for this last one. And I'm going to just drag these. And because I didn't space these out evenly, sometimes you have to go in and do these manually. But I want just a nice curved and all of these. Okay, that looks pretty good. There you go. I used the pen tool, I drew out the shape, and now I've got this cool little uh, illustration of a light bulb, kind of a abstract way of creating the light bulb, and I could even come over here and, you know, copy this, bring it in front by holding control and hitting the right bracket, group this together, grab my selection tool to scale it down. I'm holding shift and alt to scale this down. 
Put it in the center. I don't like these, like, uh, this uh, sharp corner. So what you do is you just turn them into these round joints and boom. You know, now maybe this is a uh, uh, icon for innovation or something. I don't know. Okay, so basically the whole point is that I'm creating, I'm using or I'm starting with basic shapes in order to build out my illustrations. Okay, so there you have it. That's my basic approach to creating illustrations for my motion graphics inside of Adobe Illustrator. Now, the title of this video is The Secret to Better Illustrations uh, or something like that. I haven't picked the title as of filming this, but it'll be something along those lines. Anyway, what is the secret? Well, the secret is to use primitive shapes like circles, rectangles, triangles, squares to build out the illustrations that you're trying to create and then using the other tools like the pathfinder tool the shape builder tool the direct selection tool to then further refine those shapes rather than using the pen tool and trying to just wing it just trying to draw out those shapes unless you're really you have a lot of practice with the pen tool you're not going to create good uh refined illustrations with the pen tool uh, so hopefully you learned a few things about Illustrator. I want to do a series of videos on Illustrator because I know as uh, a beginner, I was always really hesitant to dive into Illustrator because going from After Effects to Illustrator can kind of be hard. But once I got familiar with Illustrator, I really do use it for all my illustration because it really makes that part of motion graphics and motion design a lot easier. And so I think it's an important tool for all motion designers to learn. So I hope that you found that this video was helpful. If you did, hit the like button. That really does help. If you have ideas for future tutorials, leave that idea in the comment section below. And if you want more content like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And if you do hit that subscribe button, make sure you're hitting that bell icon so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Of course, you know the drill. And thanks for joining me in this video. And we'll see you guys in the next video.